So when I was a child, my dad and I would hang out at coffee shops together. He would order a coffee and I'd order a donut. We went there so often we started noticing other customers who hang out there pretty frequently too. There was one guy who always had a great story or a funny joke to tell us. One day though, he pulled a coin out of his pocket and as a kid I thought he was going to give me the coin. But instead, he made the coin disappear. In that moment, I was mesmerized by magic. And since then, I've been looking for magic in other moments in my adult life. Today, I live in San Francisco, California. It's a short drive from Silicon Valley, which is home to Facebook, <coughs> Apple, and other giant tech companies. In San Francisco, we get to experience some magic moments, like Amazon opened up a grocery store recently called Amazon Go. If you have the Amazon Go app on your phone, you can walk in, grab whatever you need from the counter, and leave without ever waiting in line to check out. Pretty magical. There's a restaurant where I can send in my lunch order through, my, through the app. Walk into the restaurant, instead of seeing dozens of restaurant workers, you see dozens of vending machine doors ready to release your meal to you. Most recently, I was walking down the sidewalk of San Francisco among dozens of people, and there was a robot about this tall with cameras around it. This robot was acting as an futuristic security guard looking for danger. Now, I mention all these examples not because they're good or bad, but because when we first see them, we think this is a magic experience. How are they doing it? Since working in tech, I've realized that we all have this magic power to create. But I have to warn you, magic can be used for good and evil. Back in 2007, I joined Facebook as a user. Eventually, my friends joined, and at first, it seemed pretty magical how I was able to reconnect with old friends and make new friends through this platform. It was beautiful. But eventually, I noticed that the friends in real life were causing tension online, and Facebook created this feeling of loneliness. So that magic experience I had initially eventually faded, and I left the platform. Mark Zuckerberg knows this, the CEO of Facebook, so he's introducing other ways to entertain the masses. The most recent entertainment channel is virtual reality. While promoting VR, he said, the magical thing about virtual reality is that it really feels like you're in a place. Well, the CEO of Facebook said this while wearing a VR headset comfortable in his office and looking at the destruction of Puerto Rico after a hurricane. Not sure if that's the best use of his magic. Another person who has this magic power to create is Elizabeth Holmes. She's the founder of Theranos. Theranos created a magic black box called the Edison. The Edison can do a high number of blood tests with a small sample of blood. It was so innovative, she kept the technology secret. And the public was curious, including healthcare professionals. One leader in the clinical chemistry space said, this box seems like magic, and that's why I want to know the science behind it. <coughs> Others were also curious, including a Wall Street Journal reporter who eventually dug far enough and found out Theranos was a fraud. They were sending fake blood test results to real patients with the potential of causing real harm. Theranos closed down, but sometimes companies can pivot away from these incidents. Uber recently hired a new CEO, and the CEO said in an interview, there's a magic about this company, and I'm trying to bring it back. One way to bring magic back to a company or to innovate is to borrow a slogan from Facebook, which is, move fast and break things. But what happens when you move too fast and the outcome is deadly? Uber's pursuing self-driving cars and in the last year they accidentally and unfortunately hit and killed a woman. Moments before this car hit the woman, the computer on the car said, I think this person is an unrecognizable object, a car, wait a sec, it's actually a bicycle. People reviewing this accident ask who should be responsible, the people or the machine? 
This question reminds me of a clip from PBS's Sesame Street back in the 1980s. They went into a classroom of kids using a computer for the first time. And the teacher asked her class, kids, who's doing the thinking for this computer? And all the kids raised their hand and said, we are. We are doing the thinking for this computer. A lot of thinking has to go into self-driving cars. MIT surveyed millions of people with this question. In the event of a brake failure, should the passengers or the pedestrians die? Millions of people ask this question, or answer this question, and what I don't like about this question, it makes it only two choices. It's like this one question people like to ask, is the glass of water half full or half empty? Well, the answer is this glass of water is actually refillable. We have more than two choices. Same thing with Uber self-driving car and MIT's research. We have the magic power to put more than just two, two options. We should use our magic power to save lives, not end lives. It's hard to predict the outcome of our technology and our magic to create. I doubt Steve Jobs could have predicted that his magic touchscreen phone, called the iPhone, would turn so many people into a sea of screens. But that's fine, because guess what? We have the choice to tell the companies how we want to use their magic and their inventions. And sometimes the companies listen. Recently, Apple introduced a thing called Screen Time. Screen Time tracks how many hours you're spending in your phone. You can set a limit, and when you get close to that daily message, it will warn you and say, hey, maybe you should spend less time looking at your screen and more of the time on things that matter to you. It's not just Apple's leadership thinking about this. Other leaders in the tech space are thinking, how can I use my magic power for good? Recently, the CEO of Salesforce, Mark Benioff, hired a chief ethical and human use officer. In an interview about ethical technology and tech addiction, Mark Benioff said, product designers are trying to make these products more addictive, and we need to rein them back. Well, as someone who works in the human experience and the design space, I'm here to tell you and everyone, it's not just the designers with this magic power. It's all of us. From the leaders, to the developers, to the customers. We all have this magic power to create. So before I leave, I ask you, how will you use your magic power? Is there any question? Is there anyone questioning about his name? Gavin <laughs> Webpage. Do you want to tell us the story? What you... When I moved to San Francisco uh, and I was applying to jobs, I found my name Kevin Page just didn't really stand out. So I added the word web in there and I nearly got job interviews. <laughs> Quite interesting, right? Is there any question? There is? No? All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kevin. I'm Kevin Webpage, an ethical innovation advocate. Okay, I'll give you three questions. And the first one is can you tell us a little bit about the presentation that you talked before? Yeah, so today at DevOps Days Jakarta, I presented on how, as creators of technology, we have this magic power to create good or bad outcomes. So today's presentation featured a few examples of companies making great products with great outcomes, and then a few that are not doing so well, and how we can try to do better. Okay. So how do you feel after you talk in DevOps Jakarta 2019? I'm really happy to be at DevOps Days Jakarta 2019, and I feel great. If you haven't been before, I recommend coming out to this wonderful event. Okay, thank you. So, the last is, um, um, can you give us a feedback or something that we can improve for next year? 
Uh, this 2019's conference is an improvement from 2018, so I don't think you have to change anything. This was a good conference. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lars, uh, can you give us one word that describes DevOps Jakarta? Uh, community. Yeah. Okay, thank you.